Hello and welcome to another edition of Light at Speed with remote controlled lighting and precision lighting. In this video I want to discuss the term binning and its relevance to LEDs and the light that they produce. Binning is a term used in the manufacture of silicon chips such as microchip processors and indeed light emitting diodes or LEDs. And remember, light emitting diodes are made from silicon and other materials, much like microprocessors and other electrical components. The manufacture of any precise silicone component is incredibly difficult. LED manufacturers try their best to mix the exact blend of LED materials in the perfect ratios to create light and electrical characteristics they want, but as a white LED produces its light by starting with a blue LED, shining that energy through a yellow phosphor, it's not difficult to see how a change in one or all of the layers can have an effect on the white light that's emitted. For example, if the blue light is slightly closer to the UV or turquoise, the result will differ. If the blend of phosphors is slightly different or laid at a different thickness, the result will be different. LED chips are also made in batches on large disks called wafers, and across the wafer, the properties can change. So companies like Cree and Osram end up with a large run of LEDs, which all may have slightly different light and electrical properties. Now, of course, if these companies could make the exact LED they want every time, then manufacturers like us would be incredibly happy, and so would they, but they can't. And so to be profitable, they need to find a way to sell as many of the chips they've made as possible. So the chips need to be sorted to find all these variations, and that process is called binning. The LED chips are carefully sorted with incredible computers that measure photometrics and electronics very quickly. Let's have a look at the specifications that LEDs are binned for. Does it work? Does the LED turn on and emit light? If it doesn't, its journey is ended. Forward voltage and current. Well, this is how much voltage and current an LED consumes to function. If these fall out of acceptable parameters, they may well not be electronically viable at all or might get too hot or not produce enough light. Flux. Each chip is measured for the amount of light it produces, and it's at its normal voltage, current, and temperature. These can range quite widely from chip to chip, and it's not unheard of for chips to be 50% brighter than a lower output chip. But the higher the flux bin, the more exclusive and expensive it is, but the more efficient they are. Chromacity. This is the key one for us and should be the main asking point about binning for lighting designers. Each chip is tested for its chromacity, or where on the chromacity diagram the LED sits. For a batch of white LEDs, this is a measure of how warm or cool a white light is, or how red or green tinted it is. The standard chromacity diagram here shows the wide variety of colours that could be emitted, but for white light we need to zoom in to the middle white zone around the black body line. What's the black body line, I hear you ask? Well, the black body line is a theoretical model of an object which perfectly absorbs or radiates the electromagnetic spectrum. And at ambient temperatures, it absorbs almost all of the spectrum and therefore looks black. One of the behaviours of this, though, is as its temperature increases, the wavelengths emitted shift towards the shorter lengths, and they start to become visible, starting as a deep red glow and becoming more yellow than white and then a piercing blue-white light. It turns out that a piece of tungsten in a lamp behaves that way too. And so if you plot that chromacity on a diagram, you get the black body curve. For white lighting, this is where pure white light resides. The further right along the curve, the warmer, and the further to the left, the cooler. But 99% of LEDs do not sit on this line, and in fact lie above or below the line. If the light falls below the line, the light will have a reddish tint, and if above, a greenish tint. LED manufacturers plot their chromacity bins on the graph around the black body line, and once tested, bin them accordingly. I've placed a marker on the graph showing a typical white LED. You can see that it lies in the middle of Cree's 7C1 bin, but could fall anywhere inside that bin or even right at the edge to be put into that bin. The shape and size of the bins closely match a McAdams ellipse. The McAdams ellipse was developed by Dr. David McAdam in 1942 and is a drawn ellipse shaped area on the chromacity diagram. And it's where the great majority of the populations wouldn't be able to determine the difference between two light sources within the same ellipse. The shape tells us that the human eye finds it more difficult to detect a change in colour temperature than a change in red or green tint. In the binning world, they are also known as steps. So if I showed you two LEDs with the same bin, you'd almost certainly say they look the same. LED producers offer their chips in a variety of step sizes. The larger though, the more chance of seeing a colour difference. And of course, like flux, the tighter the bin to the black body line, the rarer, the better, 
but also the more expensive. It was precision lighting and remote controlled lighting by our chips from what we think is the best spin and in most cases use LED spins at two steps. Here are four LEDs from a two step bin. These should look the same. Here are four LEDs spread around four steps and the keen eye among you can probably spot the difference. Not ideal. Chip on board LEDs or COBs use multiple discrete single LEDs of various bins on the same board. This has the benefit of averaging out the differences in flux between them and chromacity because they can work together to give an overall good blended flux and chromacity. LED manufacturers can then offer these in the popular bins easily, but as COBs tend to be of a large diameter, making narrow beams becomes tricky and you need large lenses or reflectors. And if you watched my last video, you'll remember it's really important for optics for efficiency. So in conclusion, LED manufacturers have a really tough job trying to produce the best quality LEDs which have the best flux and chromacity bins, but the yields of these are the lowest and thus command the highest price. Large chip on board or COB LEDs help to shrink the bins by blending lots of them together, but COBs are not the best choice for all lights. Of course, the best LED would be the brightest, the closest to the back body line with a grouping between fixtures of one step or less, but there's almost no way a company can purchase enough of these if at all to fill enough orders. So in real world terms, if you're developing a project or an area of a project that requires the best quality light with the best consistency, you want to have the tightest chromacity bins. And so should pick a manufacturer who can deliver two-step binning. Ideally, they would be from the same manufacturer as their starting point should be the same. But you might have an area that you might feel doesn't need perfectly matching lights. It might be a back of house area where it's not public facing, the client might feel the best value for money is with a lower cost product. And then four steps or higher is probably fine. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video entertaining and enjoyable. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. If you've got any interesting questions for me, fire me an email or drop them down in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye bye.